A bunch of references to the older Fallout 1 and 2 games can be found all around Fallout New Vegas. When listening to Dog the Nightkin Companion in Sierra Madre talking to himself, he mentions wanting to go back to the church. Don't like this place. Want to go back, back to the base. Or the church. Miss the church. What he's talking about is the cathedral in Fallout 1, which was a facade for concealing the Master's headquarters. The Master, for those who don't know, was the main antagonist and the leader of the Master's army, or Unity, which aimed to transform all humans into mutants. The Unity will bring about the Master race. Master! Master! Dog also mentions missing the base, which is a reference to the Mariposa military base where the forced mutations were being conducted. Inquiring further, Dog reveals he used to take orders from the Master and also mentions Lieutenant, the right-hand man, and the commander of the military base. Dog and others had to hide in base and church. The Master was there. Master was... spoke like many people. Smart. Like Lou, Lieutenant. Dog misses the church. Some of the super mutants in Jacobstown can also be heard saying they miss being in the Master's army. Some days, I miss being in the Master's army. While doing the quest GI Blues given by the King in Freeside, you'll be tasked to investigate who's been attacking the locals. When speaking with Wayne, one of the victims recovering in the Mormon fort, he will mention the name of one of the attackers. Hey wait, I just remembered something. I might have heard one of the guys that attacked us call another by name. We had just about had it when one of them said, Hey Lou, we gotta go. At least I think he said Lou. Might have been something else. Now that I think of it, he said Lou something, something with a T. Tenant, that's what he called him, Lieutenant. He probably said Lieutenant, Wayne. The boy means well, but he's dumb as a mutant sometimes. This, again, together with the comment from Roy of being dumb as a mutant, is a reference to the Lieutenant and other super mutants like Harry calling him Lou. Hmm, okay, take it to Lou. When talking to Lily, she mentions the defeat of the Master by the Vault Dweller and the destruction of the Cathedral. That wicked old Master got what was coming to him, that's what. After his Cathedral blew up, I decided it was high time to go home. There's a skill book in Fallout New Vegas by the name of Tales of a Junk Town Jerky Vendor, which is a reference to an unmarked quest in Fallout 1, where the Vault Dweller discovers that Dr. Morbid in Junk Town has been supplying pieces of human meat that were being sold as iguana bits by Bob Fraser in the hub. Using this information, the player can blackmail Bob in giving him a large slice of his profits. Jazz Wilkins in Sloan has a recipe for a Deathclaw omelette. If you ask where she came up with it, Jazz will mention her great aunt Rose and her bed and breakfast. My great aunt Rose ran a bed and breakfast back in California in a town called Modoc. She's the one who created the recipe in the first place. I don't know how she managed to get a hold of a female Deathclaw, but she kept it in a shed. Aunt Rose had a steady supply of eggs for her omelettes. At least, she did until some stranger came along and killed the Deathclaw, shot it right in the eye. This is a direct reference to Rose's bed and breakfast found in Modak in Fallout 2, where the Chosen One could buy a wasteland omelette made from a Deathclaw egg. The Deathclaw itself can be found in a shed next to the hotel building, where the player can kill it and receive 1000 experience points, but also a reputation drop in Modoc. When talking to Daisy Whitman in Novak, she mentions being a pilot and crashing a vertebrate near Klamath. Fine weather for flying. It's times like these that make me miss it all. Vertebrate pilot. 71 missions and only lost one chopper. Rotor malfunction over Klamath. Hard landing, but I walked away. This same vertebrate can be stumbled upon by the Chosen One in Fallout 2, outside the town of Klamath. Lily's vertebrate blade weapon was also obtained from that same wreckage. This old thing? Oh, I scavenged it off a wreck in Klamath. Leo showed me how to make it all ready for chopping, didn't you, Leo? When first meeting Cannibal Johnson, he mentions hearing Sergeant Dornan chewing him out. There's a twitch in my trigger finger. 
I've lost my eagle eyes, and the other day I could have sworn I heard Sergeant Dornan chewing me out. This is a reference to an enclave drill sergeant named Arch Dornan, stationed at Navarro's Air Base in Fallout 2. He was a drill instructor I knew. He was also the meanest bastard I've ever known. Once he caught this private out of uniform, and old Dornan went off on the most ear-blistering rant known to man. It was inspiring. When the Chosen One is tasked to steal vertebrate plants located in Navarro, after infiltrating the base, he may stumble upon the drill sergeant, who will yell at him for not wearing power armor. So you're the new replacement? You are out of uniform, soldier! Where is your power armor? Don't have any? You expect me to believe that, maggot? The truth is, you lost an expensive piece of Army-issue equipment! That suit is gonna come out of your pay, and you will remain in this man's army until you are 510 years old! This is the encounter referenced by Johnson. A wrecked highwayman car is located near Route 95 in Fallout New Vegas. This, of course, is a reference to the Christless Highwayman in Fallout 2, the only working vehicle that can be driven by the player. It can be found in the den and can be purchased from the local mechanic Smitty. Bruce Isaac in Novak talks about being on the run from Mr. Bishop and performing at the Shark Club in New Reno. Oh, please don't kill me. I swear I'll have... Wait. You don't work for Mr. Bishop, do you? Oh, so you have heard of me. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I was the big draw at the Shark Club. People used to pay hundreds of caps to see me. The city of New Reno and the Shark Club owned by the Bishop family can both be visited by the player in Fallout 2, as well as encountering Mr. Bishop or John Bishop and his wife. Etienne in Westside Co-op also mentions New Reno and the crime families. Well, I've lived in Nevada all my life. Started out in New Reno, but headed down here as soon as I got the chance. If you can believe it, things are even worse back home. The whole city's still run by crime families. It used to be the Mordinos and Wrights. Now it's the Wrights and Van Graffs. Seems like things never got better. In Fallout 2, you can meet and do quests for both the Mordinos and the Wrights. One of the recurring characters that can also be found in Fallout 2 is Marcus, the leader of Jacobstown, named after his friend Jacob that he founded another town with called Broken Hills. Marcus was able to become a companion and has some cool dialogue referencing the events of Fallout 2, like traveling with the Chosen One from Arroyo and blowing up the Enclave oil rig. We were looking for a Gek to save the village of Arroyo. Eventually we did nuked an oil rig in the process. We went separate ways after that. I went east into the Rockies, looking for other mutants like myself. Don't know what happened to my friend. I got a feeling it turned out all right in the end. He can be found in the Broken Hills as the Sheriff and can be convinced to travel with the player. I'm Marcus. Help build the place. Now I'm Sheriff. Dr. Henry, another recurring character living in Jacobstown, could have been encountered in the NCR Shady Sands in Fallout 2, where he had his own clinic and was busy researching a cure for the FEV mutations. He was also involved in a bunch of different side quests. Yes, specializing in neuroscience, both human and canine. Of course, this lab is nothing compared to what I had when I was with the Enclave. When trying to convince Moreno to meet with the rest of the remnants, Arcade will comment on his soldier mentality and mention Richardson. Moreno took the fall of the Enclave hard. He never questioned his orders, never questioned the legitimacy of what the Enclave was doing. To him, it was all one unbroken chain, from Washington to Richardson. A reference to Dick Richardson, the self-proclaimed president of the United States. You would have been able to meet him on the Enclave oil rig. I am the elected representative of the people. The United States does still exist. God bless us, everyone. We've just had to adapt in order to survive after the war. Asking Chief Hanlon at Cam Gulf on how long he's been part of the Rangers will make him mention Chief Elise, the commander of the NCR Rangers found in Fallout 2. Oh, well, I guess it must be coming up on 40 years or so. Back before Elise was chief, anyway. It was a heck of a lot harder then. Klamath Bob in Westside mentions the arrival of the Chosen One in Klamath, seeking Vic. Yeah, good old Klamath. 
Not a bad place if you like hunting, eating, and skinning geckos all day. <laughs> it's a pretty dull place, but I hear there was a bit of excitement when this tribal from Arroyo came to town years back. All before my time, though. Part of the GI Blue's side quest given by the king is to find out why so many NCR citizens are entering Freeside. While investigating, you may come across an NCR missionary who gives out a secret location where food is being distributed to NCR citizens only. To find out the location, you have to pass a special test. This'll just take a few moments, and it's all stuff that any real citizen of the NCR knows. Okay, first question. Who was the most popular president in NCR history? Kimball, Tibbet, Tandy, or Peterson? Interesting. This is a reference to Tandy, the president of the NCR in Fallout 2. I'm Tandy, president of NCR. My boys tell me you're looking for work. What are you handy at? Next question. What was the original name of the NCR capital? The Boneyard? Shady Sands, Aradesh, or Vault 13? References to Shady Sands, Vault 13, and the Boneyard, all locations in Fallout 1, as well as Aradesh, the village leader and father of Tandy. Judah Krager, one of the Enclave remnants, mentions the destruction of the oil rig and that it was internal sabotage. Internal sabotage took down the oil rig. Never did get the full story. The NCR took out Navarro. A reference to the Fallout 2's quest, Stop the Enclave, where the Chosen One has to infiltrate and blow up the nuclear reactor, which would result in a huge explosion. Trying to learn more about Cass will reveal that she's the daughter of John Cassidy, the owner and bartender of the Spittoon, a saloon bar next to Vault City in Fallout 2. Dad ran a bar a long time ago and it was a labor of love, Mom said. Didn't sound like it made her happy. Still, I'm guessing I got some of Dad's love of whiskey in me because the burn suits me fine. The player could also obtain him as a companion. Gift for my dad, along with my name, Rose of Sharon Cassidy. Let me know in the comments if I missed any more references, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.